Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Turk Family Fundamentals webinar series. My name is Danielle Walker, and I'm the Assistant Director in the Office of Family Engagement. Uh, for those of you that are new to this webinar series, um, this series is intended to help you become informed consultants on campus resources uh, so that you can better support your Turk. Uh, today, we're joined by staff in the Department of Resident Life. Uh, they're going to be discussing everything you need to know about move-in, um, the many resources that are in place and how you can support your TERP as they navigate this process. Um, for a few housekeeping items, uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to submit those via the Q&A feature. Uh, to access the Q&A feature, find the two conversation bubbles towards the bottom of your screen um, or the left or right, depending on where you have your Zoom toolbar. Uh, if you don't see the Q&A uh, conversation bubbles, um, click on the three dots uh, to expand your toolbar. Um, to help us answer the majority of the questions that you have, um, I'll ask you to use the upvote option. So within the Q&A feature, if you see someone uh, submit a question that you also would like the answer to, um, just click the thumbs up uh, icon. Uh, that's considered an upvote. Uh, and so I'll be prioritizing those questions. Um, also, be sure to look at the answer tab as well. So if you pose a question um, and one of our staff members answers that, it'll then move over to the answer tab. Uh, we'll do our best to respond to as many questions as we can this morning um, or this afternoon. Uh, and then lastly, this webinar is going to be recorded. Uh, and so keep that in mind. Um, I will be sending out a link to the recording uh, following our webinar today, um, and it will be available on our Turt Family YouTube channel. Um, also, you can refer to your confirmation or reminder email um, with a link to our YouTube channel. So with that, I will hand off the presentation. Welcome, everyone. Thank you, Danny. Welcome everyone. We are so excited to have you here today to talk about spring move-in, living on campus, and helping your TERP begin to get connected and be a part of our on-campus TERP community. So I am Kia Whedon, and I am the assistant to the director here in the Department of Resident Life. I'm one of three hosts today with you for the uh, webinar. I'm going to turn it over to my other two hosts to introduce themselves. Good morning. Oh, good afternoon. My name is Erin Schlegel. I'm one of the assistant directors with the Department of Resident Life. And good afternoon. I'm Dan Harefield. I'm the program manager for residential and community engagement. Wonderful. All right, let's jump in. So today uh, we're going to talk to you uh, about move in, which is coming this weekend and some tips around that to help that hopefully be a smooth and successful process. After we talk about move in, we'll talk about what exactly is in the room uh, and navigating the roommate experience, which could be new for some of our um, new to housing terps. After that, we'll spend some time talking about safety in the halls, which is paramount to us. And we want to be able to begin that conversation with you as well as your terp um, so that we can understand the expectations. It's a shared responsibility and the things that we have in place and the things that we ask and the expectations we have for our students when they live on campus. After safety in the halls, we'll talk about our resident and family welcome receptions that will happen on Sunday, shortly after the move-in time that we recommend. And then uh, we will end talking about student engagement, specifically winter welcome and some of the other things that your TERP can um, expect when they are beginning their uh, on-campus experience. And then we will certainly wrap up with any questions um, that you have and we'll answer some of those live today. So let's begin with talking about move-in. Housing assignments recently went out and that information really does help to dictate exactly where to go when coming to campus and what service desk you'll need to check into. So on the screen, you'll see that we recommend for our new students that they begin checking in uh, on this coming Sunday from 8.30 a.m. to 10 a.m. The reason we have that time period that we have highlighted is because we have a televised men's basketball game that's gonna be happening starting at noon. And the traffic that will um, be coming into campus, we anticipate could impact uh, campus arrival. So uh, in consultation with some of our partners, we believe that that time is best to avoid that major, the major traffic that will happen because of the men's basketball game. Um, we also 
uh, advise that you come in during that time because it'll give you ample time to join us for the new student and family welcome reception that Aaron will talk about a little bit later in our presentation. So when arriving to campus and keeping in mind that we have the basketball game that's coming, uh, that will be happening at 12, we recommend that you enter campus in a couple places to avoid the major traffic that's gonna happen next to our basketball arena. So entering campus around Route uh, 193 and Stadium Drive, which is the main entrance near our football stadium is recommended, as well as entering campus at either our main gate or, our, or the south gate, which is right off of Baltimore Avenue. So those entrances we highly recommend if you are arriving before or even during the basketball game. In any time you're coming into campus for moving, we always recommend that our visitors follow and listen to our UMPD, which is our, our police department and their staff for instructions around getting around campus. Cause there could be some um, places that are rerouted because of the basketball game. And so just um, follow their direction as well once you enter into those entrances that we highlighted. After the basketball game is open uh, over, all of our campus entrances will be open and operational as um, per usual. All right, so once you have entered campus and uh, you're making your way to the residence hall and, and or service desk, um, we ask that you temporarily park your vehicle um, in the marked unloading zones that are close to our halls. They will be marked and be um, noticeable for you to temporarily get there and begin to unload. We ask though that that happens within a 10 minute span. So we ask that unloading from your vehicle happens within 10 minutes or less um, before relocating to long-term parking. And this is just to honor that the unloading zone times kind of helps with flow and traffic as well. So that fellow Terp families and, and residents are allowed to have the same chance to unload on near residence halls. And, and we thank you in advance for that cooperation. So 10 minutes might sound a little tight. It is possible. We've seen it happen. We see people do it very successfully. And one of the ways that we think that you most definitely can be successful in that is when uh, we recommend that you bring a dolly or a moving cart of your own and then have at least three people as a dream team to help with move-in. That is the student who's moving in uh, and two other move-in helpers to help with the unloading to curbside and then someone to move the vehicle to long-term parking. During um, that move-in time where you're unloading and, and long-term parking is the next kind of on our um, suggested process, uh, long-term parking details are outlined um, on the website that you see highlighted on this slide. There's a move-in day tab that you'll see when you go to that website and under it, you will find information about long-term parking. It's pretty detailed, so I'm not gonna go into it here during the webinar, but highly, highly suggest that you check it out because there's information about parking, uh, long-term parking availability during the game, after the game, as well as the Monday and Tuesday leading up to the first day of spring semester classes. So check that information out because I believe it will help you map out exactly how you want to um, make sure that your unloading and parking experience hopefully goes smooth, goes smoothly and incident free. So once you have pulled up, unloaded, and hopefully someone is moving to long-term parking, everyone then hopefully will then be able to come on back to curbside to help gather information and begin to move belongings into the room because the student then has gone into check-in at the service desk to receive their key. So once the key is acquired, then everyone that comes back to curbside to gather, to gather all of the belongings and then begin to unpack and set up moving into the room. So what exactly will you find when you get into the room? Each room has a standard furniture package, which includes a desk, a dresser, bed, mattress, and closet space. Students also have access to wired and wireless internet, as well as streaming Xfinity on campus. <clears throat> you can see on the slide a couple examples of how some rooms have been furnished and decorated. Um, and we also have more um, examples of various room types on our website. And so again, the website that you see highlighted can help 
uh, be a resource to see different styles of rooms and amenities um, as you begin to plan to bring belongings and um, how to get set up um, once you arrive. We have virtual layouts that do 360 tours to kind of give you a, a visual of all, of all around the room. And if there is no 360, there's a lot of different um, options within the, the um, options that we have that are comparable to what's in the community. So knowing your room assignment, having a sense of the layout, uh, the natural next step is obviously thinking about how to make it your Terps space because it is their home away from home during their time this semester. And so we encourage, we definitely incur encourage uh, personalizing the space, but we also want to remind you that the space is shared. So um, it's important to discuss with um, the roommate or roommates kind of what the space is like if they've been there or if it's going to be a newer roommate as well, discussing what to bring, um, how to share the space, how you want to coordinate, how you want to collaborate. If you want to be, if as a reminder, you can see roommate information when you log into the Star Res portal and click on the My Assignment link. It's a good place to start in thinking about beginning those conversations. <clears throat> and thinking about personalizing room, you'll also want to think about what you do need to bring and what you don't need to bring. So we encourage that you pack smart. You don't need to bring every everything that you own, just what you need. Um, so for example, it's a bit cold. So maybe leaving some of those cooler weather clothes at home for now is okay. And thinking about bringing those later on, maybe after coming, re returning from spring break when temperatures begin to rise. That's a good example of thinking about how to pack smart. So as you think about settling in or helping your students settle in, um, we also want to remind you about furniture arrangement. And that is because um, while we certainly want you to personalize, we still need to be sure that we're not blocking um, some of our air control systems like heat, air conditioning, and dehumidification. And finally, um, we also want to remind folks that um, when it comes to shipping items, any sort of packages or deliveries that might be a part of personalizing the room, we highly, highly encourage doing that shipment for after the student has arrived and checked into the residence hall room. Before could delay the ability for our staff to sort and make the um, packages available. So again, we encourage you to ship those things once arrival has happened, not before. And if you're like, well, what can I bring and what can I not bring? Again, our website that's highlighted on this slide will help you with a very helpful list of those types of items. So now that we've talked about moving, we've talked about the room, personalizing it, let's talk a little bit more about the roommate experience. I'm going to turn it over to uh, my colleague, Erin, who's going to talk more about that. Erin? Thanks, Kia. So your student will be living with someone new. They will have a roommate, more than likely, or maybe two roommates if they are in a triple room. So like Kia mentioned, your student can view their roommate or roommate's information by logging into their housing portal. We highly encourage your students to reach out to the roommate to get to know them in advance and better understand what's already in the room and what could be most helpful to bring to the room. Uh, the student who has been living in that space um, more than likely already has a refrigerator. So there might not be a need for you to bring a refrigerator as well. So that's just an example of a good thing to start talking about as your student is getting to know their new roommate. When you arrive, uh, our staff will be on the ready to help you get settled. Um, so if you notice any concerns with your room, uh, please let us know so we can correct that. Um, our housekeeping staff has been all of the spaces where we expect new students to move in. So we expect all of the spaces to be clean and ready for you. Um, but if some, if for some reason something seems amiss, uh, we want to make that right for you. So um, our staff will be making rounds of the building. Our staff will be available at the 24-7 service desks where you checked in. Um, so please come and find us if, if we can be helpful. We are here for you. Um, and then once your student gets settled into their room, uh, they'll be getting to know their roommate. And 
one way um, that we help roommates be successful in living with each other is through the community living agreement or the CLA for short. And so in the next um, day or two after your student arrives, uh, your student's resident assistant will be in touch with your student and their roommate to draft a community living agreement. And that community living agreement will outline different areas that tend to be um, points of, of, of possible tension between roommates. So that could be anything from visitation. What do we want visitation to look like in our space? Um, what do we want the temperature to be like in our space? Who is cleaning our space? Who's taking out the trash? Things like that. Um, so that in advance, the roommates can really work through things and figure things out um, to set them up for success throughout the semester. And if at, it, at any point in time, um, the CLA needs to be modified or a change needs to be made, your students can do that. Um, and our staff, again, are there on the ready to help. So if your student is having a concern with their roommate, um, we, we want to help. So please let us know and we're happy to do that. All right, so let's talk about safety in our residence halls. And safety is truly a shared responsibility. Um, so what you can expect from resident life and in our residence halls are a couple of different things. So first, um, all of our entrances to the residence halls are locked 24 seven. So your student's ID card is the only way to swipe into the building. We also have a triple barrier access system. So essentially there are three points where a student needs to swipe to be able to get to their room. So that would be the front entrance of the building to swipe into the stairwells or to the elevator. And then third, we have the student's room key. Um, so those are the three barriers um, to keep our students safe. We also have call boxes outside of our residence halls. So if for some reason your student doesn't have their cell phone or they need to get in touch with someone inside the building, they are welcome to use those call boxes. Like we've mentioned before, we also have our 24 seven service desk, which are staffed by our community assistants. So at any point in time, if your student has a question, an emergency, or they just wanna figure out where the best place to order a pizza is from, they can come to their service desk and talk to our students. And they will know exactly how to help your student. We also have our on-call staff, which includes our resident assistants and levels of professional staff. So if your student has an emergency or needs assistance, we are on the ready to help 24-7, 365. All right, so like I mentioned before, um, safety is a shared responsibility. So that means that we have expectations of our students who live in the community to keep our community as safe as possible. And so the number one thing your student can do to stay safe and to keep their roommate safe is to lock their residence hall room door at all times. Even if you're just going to the bathroom or going down the hall to the study lounge, make sure you're always locking your door. And at all times, you should carry your room keys with you and your student ID card. We also ask that all of our students and any of their guests are respecting all members of our community and the shared community space. So what that means is if any of our students are inviting someone into the residence halls, the student is responsible for their guest behavior. So it's really important that your student is aware of that. So we're creating a respectful community. And lastly, if your student sees anything that doesn't seem right, they should say something. And again, they can go to the 24 seven service desk to make those reports and our staff are on the ready to help. We also have our 24 seven residential facilities call center um, called For Work. So if a student has any issues with their residence hall room, like for example, their window won't close or a light bulb needs to be replaced, or there's a leaky faucet in the bathroom, our students can report that 24 seven for maintenance. All right. So next, I wanna talk about our new resident and family welcome reception.
All right, so this reception will take place soon after you arrive on Sunday, starting at 1130 in the Colony Ballroom of the Stamp Student Union. And there, our director will provide a welcome for everyone. We will also be offering biometric hand scanning, which is how your student uh, will need to access the dining hall for their first meal on Sunday. So they can have their hand scanned so they can access dining later on. We will also have a plethora of resources available. We'll have refreshments um, and be able to answer any questions that you might have. So it's a great opportunity for your, for your student and for you all to get connected um, right after you arrive and get settled to your room. And now I'm gonna turn it over to my colleague, Dan. Thank you. All right, thank you, Erin. Um, so you're here, you go to that reception, you have a few moments to help your student get settled into their new room. And then you gotta have that, that interaction of, okay, it's time. It, you, you are now here on the University of Maryland campus. You're about to start this new journey. Go forth and prosper essentially. So um, we are gonna take care of your student once uh, you depart from campus, once they get settled in. We've got a whole assortment of activities I'm here to help support students in that transition into the start of the semester. Um, starting off with a lot of community-centric um, engagements on the Sunday. So um, after the uh, family reception, the student family reception earlier in the day, we do have meet and greets that students will attend at four o'clock. Um, your the students RA and uh, our website are two different resources that are gonna be highlighting all of the different locations. Uh, depending on where your student is living, which community they're in. Um, but they'll go to their meet and greet. It's a great chance to connect with other new students, connect with our resident assistants, learn a little bit about living here on campus. And then, as the second bullet highlights here, head off to dinner together. Um, have a community dinner over in the Head to Meet Sea Dining Hall. Um, so it's, a, again, a great way to extend those connections and continue to build on some new friendships. And then later in the evening, there will be community events that are going to take place various times, roughly in the time frame of starting between 7 p.m. and 9 p.m. Um, depends on the individual community. But essentially, students will be able to head back to their community to learn about the specific events uh, once they come in for the meet and greets and go enjoy all sorts of different things, game nights, crafting, karaoke, uh, bingo, all sorts of different activities, depending on the community that your student's living in. So. Like I said, that Sunday is really about being a little bit more community centric, students getting to learn a little bit more about the other residents uh, and start making those connections more locally. And then we move on to uh, Monday and Tuesday. So we have a couple days after your student moves in before we actually start with classes on that Wednesday. Um, so we are gonna be hosting a few different things over in the Stamp Student Union. Uh, it's kind of a centralized place um, as the stamp likes to highlight, they're the central hub of the campus. Um, so we're going to have a few different things over there throughout the day on Monday and Tuesday. Monday, we're going to have what's called Frost Fest uh, from 12 p.m. to 4 p.m. And that's going to mostly take place in the uh, lower levels of the stamp student union around the area where our Turp Zone bowling alley is located. Uh, but there will be a number of different activities for students to engage in, including free access one of the few times that this is available, but free access uh, to the Turp Zone. So to, to go bowling, play billiards, video games, um, all sorts of different activities down there. Studio A is our arts and crafts facility that's over in the Stamp Student Union, and they're going to be doing some crafting activities uh, that students can jump into that day. MICA, which is our multicultural office, um, they have uh, their office is technically called Cozy Corner, as far as like kind of a social hangout space, they're gonna move that upstairs to the Baltimore room and they're gonna have a lot of games, crafts and food. Um, so another great way to, to get connected and meet other new students. And then there will be uh, a blanket making project that we're gonna be hosting in the studio that's actually between Studio A and Terp Zone uh, called, uh, it's for a, an organization called Project Linus. Uh, the blanket making will be um, uh, taking place there and donated to that organization. And then finally, the University Book Center, or the UBC, uh, will be open and have some special things going on 
Um, while they may have some special deals, I promise you it's not on the books. The books are going to be their regular cost, but there might be some turf here, uh, some giveaways, uh, some things to engage with with the book center. So definitely a great way to get a handle on some of the resources that we have available over in the Stamp Student Union um, throughout that afternoon. And then we're going to be back there again that evening in the Colony Ballroom, the same location as the reception for Turk Bingo. Uh, we've purchased a bunch of really cool prizes, things like Beat Studio Buds, uh, TV, uh, Polaroid Camera, um, Arts and Crafts Kits, all sorts of really cool things that students can win uh, by attending and, and participating in that program. So we'll be hosting that from 8 to 10 on Monday evening. And then on Tuesday, we're going to have our kind of culminating event called the Chill Zone, uh, which is a relaxation fair style event. So in the atrium, which is on the first floor of the Stamp Student Union, we're going to be hosting the relaxation fair specific elements. So things like mini massages, um, get your or make your own um, uh, lotion or lip balm or put together your own bamboo plant. And then um, we'll have some light refreshments that are going to be uh, in that space as well. And then over in the PG room initially, in the Prince George's room, is going to be an academic success workshop, a way to try to help our students uh, kind of jump in with the right mindset to a new semester and in, in, uh, on, on a new campus. Uh, and just kind of think about what are some of those best practices to start off the semester strong. That'll be taking place from 5 to 545. And then that room is going to convert into more of a hangout space with some crafting and games and the extension of the um, snacks that are going to be available. So we have all these different things happening over in the stamp between Monday and Tuesday. But additional to that, um, on Tuesday, there are going to be open tours with our RecWell Recreation Wellness um, uh, program. So over in the Epley Recreation Center, which is on the north side of campus, adjacent to the Ellicott and Cambridge communities. They're going to be open from 10 to 2.30, giving tours on uh, every half hour. So just pop in over there and students have a chance to learn about all the different wellness and fitness uh, resources that are available to them through RecWell. And then at four o'clock on that Tuesday in the Cambridge Community Center, we're going to have an event hosted by our multicultural advocates called Room to Share. It's going to be a combination of some crafting with origami and some conversations about what it means to live in a diverse and multicultural community. So a little bit about identity, a little bit of fun with origami, um, but it's going to be a good time hosted by our student multicultural advocates. So um, just kind of a, a run through of the various activities that we have available to students once they get here and once they're getting acclimated to the campus. And then that Wednesday is officially the start of the spring semester. Uh, I'm going to turn things back over now to Aaron to, oh, sorry, actually, one more thing. I apologize. Other upcoming events. We have uh, two major events that happen over in the Stamp Student Union um, that are kind of marquee ways to kick off the, the spring semester. The first one is called the Second Look Fair. Um, the Second Look Fair is kind of the adjacent program to our First Look Fair that happens in the fall, but it's a way for our students to learn about how to get involved on campus. We have over 800 student organizations on this campus, different ways for students to get involved. Um, and there are going to be uh, table setups throughout the Stamp Student Union on uh, February 8th. It's a Thursday from 10 to 3. Um, they, students can take a look at the website, stamp.umd.edu slash second look fair for more information as we get a little closer to the event. But they can actually check out the organizations ahead of time through TerpLink, terplink.umd.edu. So if they're looking to get involved, could be um, athletics or sports uh, activities, could be our fraternities and sororities could be um, different kind of social clubs, uh, identity-based organizations, travel clubs, all sorts of different things. There are, are so many options for students. And the Second Look Fair is a really great way for students to navigate all the variety of options and start to hone in on what might be most meaningful for them. Um, and then actually the very next day is the Stamp All-Nighter. That's going to be on February 9th. And that will take place starting at 5 p.m., but runs past midnight. Uh, and that'll just be a whole bunch of really uh, fun events throughout the stamp, throughout that uh, late afternoon and evening into the late at night, late of the night. Um, but all sorts of different giveaways and activities and, and fun things to do over in the stamp. There's going to be more information coming out about that uh, over the course of the next week or so. Uh, but students should definitely 
keep an eye on the stamp all nighter. It's a really, really amazing annual event that we host here on campus. All right, now with that, there's one other big thing that we need to highlight uh, before we get to your questions. So I'm gonna turn it back over to Aaron now uh, to talk about room selection. All right, thanks, Dan. So this might be a little tough to think about because you all haven't arrived on campus yet, but we wanted to give you a heads up because our room selection process will happen soon after your student arrives. Um, so if your student would like to return to the residence halls for next year, they will need to complete the residence hall housing and dining agreement, um, which is available now through February 26th at 4 p.m. And that is a hard deadline and it's a no obligation deadline. So if your student is interested in returning, they must complete that agreement. That's the first step in the process. We will have a plethora of housing options available from traditional residence halls to suites and apartments to semi-suites. Um, so we've got a wide array of options, um, particularly for our students who will be rising sophomores, um, plenty of options um, that uh, to choose from. And it's important to know that we have two upcoming webinars um, to review in more detail the room selection process. So the first one is for parents and family members, which will take place on February 7th. So we highly encourage you to attend that webinar so that you can be an informed supporter of your students. And then we will have a student-focused webinar on February 29th. Um, so it's really important that our students are keeping up with our website, reading emails, uh, because they will receive plenty of information about this process. Um, and there are very specific deadlines with this process. So we wanna make sure all of our students are informed so that if they wanna come back to campus, they, they're able to do so. All right, so uh, now we can move on to Q&A. Thank you, Erin, Kia, and Dan. Um, I was compiling some questions as you all were presenting. Um, and uh, for folks that are joining us, if you have questions, continue to put those in the Q&A um, and we will get to those. Um, so the first question that I have, um, where can students find which service desk they are assigned um, and where are the service desks located? I can take that one. That information is on our website. Um, you can find where your service desk is located. Thank you. Um, and then uh, this is always a question that we get. Uh, will there be rolling bins and carts available at move-in? I could take that one. Yes. <laughs> The answer is yes, there will be yellow carts usually is what folks will call them will be available at our various service desks to assist with move in with that, along with the recommended uh, either hand dolly or move in cart uh, should be um, should help with some successful move in. Thank you. Uh, this was touched on uh, in the webinar, but I did want to make sure we asked it uh, live at the end. Um, how can students find who their uh, roommates are um, to be able to discuss and coordinate? Yeah, I can also take that one. Um, you can see your roof roommate information by going to, um, the student should visit their housing portal, which is on starres.umd.edu. Your student will log in into their housing portal and they'll be able to view the, their roommate information there. Um, specifically clicking on my assign the my assignment link should take you to that information. So again, housing portal at starres.umd.edu. And once you log in, you can view your information by going to the my assignment link. Thank you. Um, and if folks haven't uh, checked it out in the chat, um, Tracy has been sharing some links as well. And so there um, is a link for the service desks in there. Um, move in information and also uh, star res um, for the housing portal. Um, for the long term parking, um, will uh, families have to pay for that long term parking um, during move in? 
I can take that one as well. Um, so going to some the links that Tracy has shared, specifically the one that um, says Terp Housing Move and Breaks Move, move in Day, that information um, under Move in Day has all of the parking for long terming that is long term parking that is listed. Um, they are kind of specific per day, as well as whether the basketball game is happening or not. So we encourage you to go to that because in consultation with our DOTS colleagues, our Department of Transportation Services colleagues, those lots are available during the specific days and times noted at no cost. If you do not see a garage or a lot listed, the regular parking enforcement and policies do apply. So check out that website. It will tell you by day, by event, what is available for parking for long term. If you if you're familiar with campus and you don't see a, a lot or a garage listed, don't park there basically if you don't want to pay. <laughs> <laughs> that is correct. Um, uh, so a question came through that um, I can help answer. Uh, when and where will students pick up their uh, student ID? Um, so when students come for orientation. Um, they are um, part of their orientation. They'll go and get their student ID at that time. Um, typically, students, when they register for orientation, um, they'll be asked to, um, or they'll be encouraged to go ahead and submit their ID. Um, so that way, when they come for orientation, their ID card will be made um, and they can pick it up. Uh, for students who are doing the virtual orientation option, um, students have to attend orientation and register for classes. And then once they register for classes, they'll be able to go um, to the office of the registrar, which is located in the Mitchell building. Um, so the building right next to the M circle, um, they'll be able to go there. The registrar's office is on the first floor when you walk in um, and they'll be able to pick up their student ID at that point. So depends on if students are doing an in-person orientation or not. Um, in person, they pick it up during orientation. If they're doing virtual, they'll pick it up uh, following orientation and registering for classes. Uh, the next question is, um, if students can't make the new student and family reception, um, can they get their bio scan done um, at another time? And when, when should they get that done? I can also take that one. Um, yes, you can get your bio scan if you're unable to make the the reception on Sunday at South Campus Dining Hall. I'm looking at my colleagues to make sure. <laughs> yes, at the South Campus Dining Hall. Um, on Sunday in particular, Sunday uh, the 21st, uh, the residence, that uh, dining hall is open starting at four. So it'll be a little later in the day, um, but you would be able to go get it when they're open. And if you're interested in seeing um, the hours for specifically the South Campus Dining Hall, you could just visit our UMD Dining Services website. Thank you. Um, I'm looking through some other questions here. Um, so questions about orientation. Um, I encourage you to contact the orientation office for that. Um, they would be best able to assist um, with any questions regarding uh, orientation. Um, and you can uh, look them up at orientation.umd.edu and they'll be able to help with that. Um, let's see. Will there be any issues getting into the rooms if their registration was bumped next week? Um, and so I'm guessing with this question, they wouldn't have their student ID yet. Um, would there be any issue getting into the rooms? I can take that. If you're not able to pick up your UID prior to arrival, um, you can contact the service desk. Um, they can let you inside and issue you a temporary ID card so you can swipe in and out of, of your residence hall um, until you get your UID card. Thank you. Um, and then there's a question on the main buildings. Um, so the buildings uh, will have, will be operating basic hours um, to my knowledge. Uh, so depending on where you're wanting to go, you'll want to look at their website to see what their operating hours are for um, for Sunday. Um, for the staff, uh, are there any 
questions um, that came through that you wanted to answer live or any other information you want to share before we before we wrap up? Great. Um, okay, so uh, as I mentioned at the top of this webinar, um, this webinar is being recorded. Uh, so please um, keep that in mind. Um, I will be contacting you all via email later this afternoon um, with a link to the recording as well as a survey. Um, so you can tell us how we did, um, how we can improve as well as any other topics uh, that you would like to learn about. Um, also, contact information. Um, is there a next slide with any contact information for your office? Um, I, I don't believe there is, but you can contact us at reslife uh, at umd.edu for email or 301-314-2100. That goes directly to our main line for the Department of Res and Life. Perfect. Um, so again, I'll include their um, contact information in the email as well. Um, but please feel free to reach out to uh, ResLife if you have any other questions or concerns. Um, they're happy to help. You can also contact my office, uh, Family Engagement, um, and I'll be happy to help where I can as well. Um, so again, thank you all for joining us today. I'll be in touch uh, later this afternoon. Um, and thank you again, everyone. Have a great day.